Ça beaucoup de la chambre ça doit beaucoup ça doit beaucoup de mal Please stand. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Rejoicing today as we give thanks to the Lord. We call upon His name. We make known His deeds among the peoples. We sing praises to Him. Sing praises to the Lord our God. Sing praises to Him. Join us as we come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Dearly beloved, let us come into the presence of the Almighty God, praying together as we all kneel. Let us confess together. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me, that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as we respond to the great and tender mercies of our God, joining the heavenly chorus this morning, proclaiming the Gloria in excelsis. Together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, 
you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph in your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A proclamation of the Word of God, taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18. Then the Word of the Lord came to me, saying, What do you mean by using the proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers eat the sour grapes, but the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, you are surely not going to use this proverb in Israel anymore. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins will die. Yet you say, why should the Son not bear the punishment for the Father's iniquity? When the Son has practiced justice, and righteousness, and has observed all my statues and done them, he will surely live. The person who sins will die. The son will not bear the punishment for the father's iniquity, nor will the father bear the punishment for the son's iniquity. The righteousness of the righteous will be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon himself. But if the wicked man turns away from all his sins, which he has committed, and observes all my statutes, and practices justice and righteousness, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions, which he has committed, will not be remembered against him. Because of his righteousness, which he has practiced, he will live. Do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, rather than that he should turn away from his ways and live? But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, will he live? All his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered for his treachery which he has committed and his sin which he has committed. For them he will die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not right? Is it not, yours? Is it not your ways that are not right? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies because of it, for his iniquity which he has committed, he will die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness, which he has committed, and practices justice and righteousness, he will save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all his transgressions, which he had committed, he will surely live. He shall not die. But the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not right. Are my ways not right, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are not right? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, each according to his conduct, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions so that iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. Cast away from, 
cast away from you all your transgressions, which you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, repent and live. The word of the Lord. Please stand for a responsorial psalm coming from Psalm 105. Psalm 105 verses 1 to 22. Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonders which he has done, his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. Then he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. Saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. When they were only a few men in number, very few and strangers in it. And they wandered about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He permitted no man to oppress them, and he reproved kings for their sakes. Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. And he called for a famine upon the land, he broke the whole staff of bread. He sent the man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They afflicted his feet with fetters, and he himself was laid in irons. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him, the ruler of peoples, and set him free. He made them lord of his house and ruler over all his possessions. To imprison his princes at will, that he might teach his elders wisdom. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever, will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our second proclamation of the Word of God is taken from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 7. For on the one hand, there is a setting aside of a former commandment because of its weakness and uselessness. For the law made nothing perfect. And on the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And, in, and inasmuch as it was not without an oath, without an oath, but, in, but he with an oath through the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. So much the more also Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. The former priests on the one hand existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, 
and exalted above the heavens. Who does not need daily, like those, who, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, for, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of the people. Because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came from the law appoints a son made perfect forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May the Lord be in our minds and in our lips and in our hearts as we hear his holy gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke chapter 10. Beginning with verse 25. And a lawyer stood up and put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But wishing to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance, a priest was going down on that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on a journey, came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion, and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him. Whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, The one who showed mercy toward him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do the same. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Oh, give thanks to the Lord and then call upon his name. Make known his greatness to the people. We now come to 47 days of celebrating the resurrection. Perhaps the question we need to ask ourselves is what has been its effect in our lives? How has it, if it ever did, transform us into a higher, as Paul said, reaching forward and moving upward in the kingdom of God. 
It was yesterday, I believe, that we said that the kingdom coast continues to grow and grow. It's on the increase. And like the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, when it moves, Israel had to move with it. And so we come today celebrating the greatest season, which does not really end on Sunday, but it only begins because it is now the story of Christ and His church. With the Spirit and the bride saying, Come, Lord Jesus, fulfill your will on earth as it is fulfilled in heaven. We take the challenge of St. John Paul. He said, Do not despair. You are Easter people. And hallelujah is your song. This should be the whole proclamation of the church as we come, realizing the greatness of our God and the work that He has done in our lives. As we look at the gospel today and the readings, again, like a little boy in a toy store who does not know where and which to first go to in this little toy store because there are so many toys. It's the same feeling many of us would have when we are confronted with these words from the Old Testament in Ezekiel, from the New Testament in Hebrews, and then in the Gospel of Luke. Ano ba uunahin natin? Ang gaganda lahat eh. Punong-puno at hitik na hitik sa kapangyarihan, pagmamahal, kadakilaan ng Panginoong Diyos. So let's look at the Gospel first and try to relate all of this in our lives. The gospel, I believe, is a very familiar gospel which I'm sure we have heard many times preached to us. We've ourselves preached it in many occasions. As we look at it, we have to remember that the gospel is not just a nice lesson on social manners and ethics and philanthropy. Because when we look at how the fathers opened the gospel of the Good Samaritan, from John Chrysostom to Augustine to Aquinas, and even more recently to Ratzinger, all of them had one single common thread. That beyond the ethical, beyond the social, beyond the philanthropical, is the theological message of the gospel. For if we miss that, we eventually succumb to eating man's bread. We will not live alone on man's bread, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Everything in scriptures must be brought back to the very heart of the creator of all things. And I believe, I'm sure you've heard and seen in your meditation this gospel. A man, because it is that man is you and it's me. This man was walking not to Jerusalem, not to the city of peace, not to the city of the Lord. He was walking to Jericho, the place where they were met with opposition in Joshua chapter 6. See, I have given Jericho in your hands, says God to Moses. They were met with this place where Zacchaeus was the money changer. And it was a place that connotes evil and wrongness. And many times we today do not realize that journey we are taking. And we are beset with robbers. We are beset with Things which many times is beyond our control. We are left helpless. Many times like drowning and it seems like we can't go beyond. But the law came with the priest. And the law came with the Levite. But we could not see the help until the good Samaritan came. The Samaritan who felt compassion. And we all know that Samaritan is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that Hebrews 7.25 says, 
he is able to save forever. Or in one translation, he is able to save to the uttermost because he always makes intercession for us. Unlimited. And has he now, it says there, felt compassion. And that word there literally means the heart of a mother being opened to her child. That is the context of that word compassion. It is more than just a feeling of pity. It is calm passion. Having the desire to identify that with Paul said in Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request, not the request of the one who is sick, make it now your request. It is now my pain. It is now my hurt. It is now my struggle. It is now my confusion that we can now come to him. And as we see this, he did the greatest thing of bringing healing and completing the work, leaving him in the inn, which is the church of the living God, which 1 Timothy 3.16 says, the pillar and the very steadfast, the author of truth, the support of truth. And he gave innkeepers, the person of bishops and priests, so that, empowered with the two denarii of the presence of God, we have the continuity of what Hebrews says, a priest does not come every year, but there is someone who is there permanently so that Christ will fulfill what he says to the disciples and to the church. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we bring Christ's heart and compassion to the, to the world. As we look at this, it is so awesome and very challenging to realize how we today have the mandate not only to celebrate and to proclaim the greatness of God, but to make sure that generation after generation the continuity of God's presence will always be there because it is Christ who now continues to minister to each and every one. That we can begin to see the greatness of our God. May we understand. May we be the Easter people that does not stop on Pentecost but continues to live a life that Christ our Lord is risen. We are Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us please stand. Together, in response to the questioning world that says, who do you believe in? Every day we have that opportunity to declare to the heavenlies, to the principalities, to the powers, to the church, the pillar and the support of the truth. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ believes in God. Together, let us proclaim this. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Beloved, let us now pray for the whole state of Christ's church 
and for the world. Almighty Father, we lift before you your holy Catholic Church. We pray for her leaders, especially Bishop Craig and Bishop Ariel. We lift before you the people of this community, this nation, and the world. We pray for our governmental leaders, especially President Marcus. We lift before you all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Father, continuing to believe that the very Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will quicken and give life to these mortal people who have been endowed with your grace of healing. Praying for the complete recovery of Antonio Season Jr., Gloria Kabatingan, Lisa Arsenio, Peng Lara, Fer Lau, Jose Arellano, Emily Brainy, Geraldine Season, Cecilia Habana, Norma Villanueva, Honorato Olaguer, Marivic Santos, Ana Emano, Salve Esmena, Brenda Lagaheno, Vicente Dumut Jr., Bong Lopez, Pelagio Malacas Jr., Angela Constantino, Alma and June Katendig, Cecil Arceo Baguno, Joshua Ryan San Miguel, Caitlin Magtibay, Eterna Corong, Roberto Rosales, Lilio Mendoza, Rica Kalilao, Alma Perez, Vilma Villarin, Te for Fojas Magbag, Nova De Vera, Haydin De Leon. We thank you, Father, for these lives and add to them, Lord, Ella Reburar, that your healing grace will be upon them. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Give to the departed eternal rest. Especially lifting up Helen Alikaya, Josie Hemora. Let us now lift up to God the corporate petition. Almighty God and King, our dwelling place in all generations, owner of the earth and all it contains, grant unto us our allotted inheritance, we pray, and the grace to build upon it facilities in which your people being restored in your image and ever growing in love for you, might become a habitation of your presence and ministers of your life. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns together with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you shared your glory before the foundation of the world. Be glorified in us as we fulfill our purposes in you. We ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, we are on our journey to Jerusalem, the city of peace. That's why the peace of the Lord is always with you. Now, let us share that peace with each other, and especially for those of you at home, the peace of Christ be with you. Peace to you all. Peace. Beautiful. <laughs>
rejoicing in the greatness of the work of Christ that we can now come and offer our lives, our hearts, and what He has blessed us with in the provisions He gave. Let us come and bless the Lord. your name, O God, fulfilling what you have commanded us in Psalm 47, to shout to the Lord, clap your hands, O ye people, shout to the God with a voice of triumph. Let us join and lead now all of creation in earth and on heaven with a resounding praise for all his blessings as we proclaim the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the body of Christ. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in our Lord's divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become the blood of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we bring these tithes and offerings before you. They will be used in your church for the work you've set before us and the furthering of your kingdom. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, by your mercies, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from all my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen and amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. You have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before him. You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. And so, Lord, we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. Please kneel. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. My Lord, my God. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. My Lord and my God, have mercy. stand.
Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Unite us to your Son in His sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through Him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Remember your servants, Craig, our patriarch, and Ariel, our bishop, all the clergy, and all your faithful people. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Helen and Josie we may all enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. For it is by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Easter proclamation continues. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Jesus died for you and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving. Father, thank you for the precious body and blood that you, your son, has given to us for life eternal. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Fill your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you always.
Easter people, let us now go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.